So, you're all ready to go. You have your spin cast outfit uh, spooled up with uh, monofilament line. You've got your, your either a circle hook or an Aberdeen style hook, your bobber, uh, your split shot weight. Now the only thing you need is something to put on the hook. I recommend natural bait. Natural bait catches more fish than artificial baits. There, I've said it. Fish are used to eating natural things like worms and grubs and nymphs and larvae and so on and so forth. So let's start there. Um, really almost anything that creeps and crawls, fish will eat. All-time favorite, worms, night crawlers. Most people will buy these at a bait store. You can certainly find these on your own. A really good exercise, if you have never done this, is to go out and find your own bait when you go fishing. Yeah, not many people will go out and start turning over rocks and, and looking for you know, half-buried logs and, and digging them up and turning them over. But this is where natural bait lives. And in a number of ways, this natural bait ends up in the water and fish eat them. Um, if you have kids that you're taking fishing, by all means, make them find their own bait. They will have a ball. They'll likely have more fun looking for bait than maybe actually using the bait in fishing. If you're at the, um, the, uh, tackle store, which there are becoming alarmingly fewer and fewer of these days. Uh, bee moth or wax worms, grubs, uh, these are basically insect larvae, uh, uh, bee larvae. Um, work wonderfully. Uh, crickets is an all time uh, uh, favorite. One thing that's not really sold in, in stores is grasshoppers. And just about mid-August uh, into September uh, we get the grasshoppers around here absolutely fantastic bait uh, Japanese beetles any gardener would be more than happy to have you come and collect a great big jar full of Japanese beetles uh, put them on a small hook bluegill will literally fight each other for the opportunity to eat these and you are uh, helping to combat an invasive species. Really simple to hook a, uh, a worm onto a hook. Uh, if you're using red wiggler worms, you know, these have a little smaller diameter. Uh, you basically lace them onto the hook, uh, like in this, this lower illustration right here. Um, a, another very good uh, technique is to use what's now called a wacky rig where you just hook the worm through the hook once this gives a very natural presentation to the fish it if if a worm you know gets washed into into the water um let's say a heavy rain it's going to look more natural kind of not all bunched up, not all clumped up. Um, this is going to, to be particularly more effective on larger fish. Um, you know, the young, dumb uh, bluegill will, will attack this thing all day, but they will definitely go after the larger fish will zero in on uh, this fish, this bait in a wacky rig uh, uh, presentation. One pet peeve of mine is when you go to the bait store and you, you, you buy your bait, it comes in a little styrofoam uh, container. Um, the styrofoam is really good. It, it keeps them cool and your, you, your, your um, worms don't cook as, as quickly. Discard that properly, please. 
do not leave it at the um, uh, on the bank or, or, or toss it into the uh, into the lake. Um, uh, also, uh, uh, a good tip is to make sure that whenever you get home from fishing and you have put this in the back seat, that you remove it from the back seat. Else, like three days later, people are saying, what smells in here? Oh, God, something died. Well, yeah, literally, you know, half of your half, your your dozen worms, your night crawlers are, are now dead. Um, I do like to use night crawlers. I usually will buy night crawlers instead of uh, 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 worms. Um, perfectly fine to cut them in half and sometimes even into quarters where you're, you're using just like maybe the, the tip of the worm. Um, works very, very well. Other live baits, uh, leeches are very good for people who are brave enough to use leeches. Um, I hate leeches. I really, really, really hate leeches. Um, so I will not be purchasing leeches for use in live bait. Um, wax worms we mentioned, crickets we mentioned. Uh, one of the best places to buy crickets, if you're really into that, crickets are an awesome bait for um, crappie. Um, don't buy these at the bait store. Buy them at the pet store. People who keep reptiles, lizards, um, snakes, just all kinds of things, um, very often will feed them crickets and pet store. Sell crickets at a much lower price than the bait stores do. So go in and, and pick up your, uh, your, your crickets. The other thing I would encourage you to do uh, is to harvest your own. Night crawlers are easy to catch. You just need a, a, a dark night, preferably after a light rain, a flashlight, and a container. And you go night crawler hunting. The basic technique is to go out, walk very, very softly. You're going to use your flashlight to, to look for the night crawlers. And, and they're, they're aptly named because what they do is they, 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 they come uh, out at night to look for a mate. Uh, night crawlers are asexual animals, so they really don't care. Um, and they live in burrows deep underground. Uh, night crawlers are what's referred to as a vertical worm. They travel between the surface and about four, sometimes five feet deep. Um, red worms or red wigglers are a, a horizontal worm. They only live in about the top six inches, maybe down to a foot. So they occupy, uh, occupy a much narrower uh, uh, range. The night crawlers will, will go from very deep up shallow uh, to the surface at night, and that's where you can very easily catch them. They sometimes will come completely out of the, their burrow and start moving about looking for a mate, and that's where you can catch them. More often than not, though, they're half out of the burrow, and and night crawlers, you know, can be very very long. I mean, it's it's not unusual at all to be able to stretch a night crawler uh, 12 inches, and so the the technique is to catch the night crawler when they're half out of the burrow, and so you take your flashlight, you're walking very very softly. These guys can detect, you know, just the most minute vibration so you're walking very very softly out through the grass you're using your flashlight not to shine directly on the burrow because they actually are light sensitive and they'll detect that and they'll they'll slip back into their burrow but look at the the outer aurora of the of the light the, the very very edges don't shine the light directly on them better yet you know, if you're a pro night crawl, night crawler hunter, uh, you'll get a red lens to put over your flashlight. They 
don't detect red very well and so you can shine that directly on them anyway so you're 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 out you're kind of crunched over you're you're you know just looking at the outer edges of your light and you're searching for that that shiny brown uh, 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 color and you see one and very very carefully very slowly very quietly you you sneak up on them you you take your your fingers and you put them in a in a pincher fashion with the thumb and the index because what you're going to have to do is to come down on to the nightcrawler with your fingers and pin them to the ground right at the burrow pause the nightcrawler is going to freak out he's going to start to to to, to wiggle and, and twist and turn and contract and you just have to to keep him pinned right there so you'll you'll feel the nightcrawler starting to relax a, a little bit and, and at that point wrap your fingers you know around the 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 the, the crawler and then gently starting to pull You'll, you'll feel them kind of relax and the resistance is futile. It will will lessen and you can start to ease them out of the burrow. You have to be very, very delicate with this. And you'll probably end up tearing a, a few of them in half, honestly. Uh, and, until you, 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 you know, kind of get the technique down. Um, if you do... Um, uh, tear a crawler in half uh, throw the half that you have away you don't want to put them into the bait bucket because that will eventually uh, kill all of the the night crawlers probably before you can um, take them fishing so the little bait bucket could be something as simple as a as a coffee can a, a plastic container uh, put a little bit of uh, wet grass uh, maybe some dirt in there um, it doesn't take very much some people use like wet newspaper um, uh, shredded up seems to, to, to work well um, so that's how you can catch night crawlers you can catch dozens and dozens and dozens of, of, of night crawlers um, it's fun activity, especially for kids, and it really teaches them control, you know, how to, you know, control their excitement, control their, their boredom, uh, control their bodies, because if you don't do this right, you're not going to catch night crawlers. So uh, anyway, there you go. Um, moving on. There's another category that I would encourage you to um, explore as far as baits, and it's what I call grocery baits. And I, I don't think that's an official term. I just kind of made that up. But, uh, I mean, a lot of people do this. Who has not caught bluegill using bread? Uh, Wonder Bread seems to be the best because scientists have proven that it and cockroaches are the only things that will survive a uh, nuclear holocaust. Um, you can take a piece of Wonder Bread and just kind of mush it up into a little ball and form that around the hook and toss that out. You'll probably need to use some split shot on there because it is buoyant, um, you know, but sink that. Eventually, the bread will kind of moisten and, and fall off the hook, but by then you've probably caught a bluegill. Uh, hot dogs also work uh, very well. The hot dogs has been one of the, uh, the favorite catfish baits for, for many, many years. Uh, corn catches any number of, of species, particularly bluegill, you know, of course, red ear, uh, and catfish. Uh, really seem to to like corn some people use chicken livers honestly I've never used chicken livers a uh, dog food um, there's big support out there for various uh, brands of, of dog food and if you think about it if you've ever been to a fish uh, hatchery at fish hatcheries they feed fish not natural bait i mean they don't go go out and catch a whole bunch of worms and scatter them out on the water for the fish to eat that's just not economically feasible what they do instead is they buy fish chow 
No, I'm serious. I'm, I'm not making that up. It's, it's actually called fish chow, uh, Perina uh, fish chow. And it looks amazingly like dog food. And so, particularly with stocked fish, this is something they're used to eating, and it can be very, very, very effective. Okay, the last thing to mention here is Wheaties. Um, there's a, a ton of recipes online for making carp bait using Wheaties. And you, you kind of grind up the, the, the Wheaties and you mix other things in with, with it, and it makes this really great, um, tasty dough ball that you can use to to catch carp it, it's it's apparently very very effective i've i've never used it um uh, i i don't know how many of you you folks are you know into breakfast cereals or, or wheaties in particular but um uh, general mills corporation for well literally decades have posted a have have used the image of, of famous athletes um, on their Wheaties boxes, and they caught wind of um, uh, carp fishermen making bait using Wheaties, and so they they um, uh, several years ago decided to honor that by by putting a picture of a carp on a on a Wheaties box um, uh, right there. So, moving on, uh, preserved and scent baits. A preserved bait would be like a catfish bait, a dough, a dough ball bait that you would buy at a sporting goods store, or bait shop, um, just like the, the Wheaties recipe. It, it's some concoction. There's there's hundreds of different you know varieties of this. There's there's you know um, a Buddy Bill blood bait, um, cheese baits, garlic. Uh, you'd have no idea that 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 catfish had such a sensitive palate that they would would demand all of these these various flavors of of dough bait um, but if you catch fish on a particular dough bait um, you have a tendency of continuing to use that dough bait up here we have salmon eggs Growing up fishing in the Allegheny Mountains of uh, western Pennsylvania, uh, we use salmon eggs all the time. And you would buy these little orange jars of, of salmon eggs and use a very small hook, probably like a number 8, maybe a number 10, usually a short shank uh, hook, and you would just thread one salmon egg on there and you would catch trout with these uh, it was wonderful and you'd also catch bluegill i have not been able to find these in years i don't even know if they're still produced or, or maybe they're only marketed in areas you know specific to to trout fishermen um, berkeley does have a gulp bait which is in essence a synthetic uh, a salmon egg i've never tried them uh, but they're out out there one of the big advantages of the preserved baits uh, or scent baits is that um, they're incredibly convenient you can buy a, a, a jar or a, a, a tub of this stuff and keep it with your fishing tackle and any particular time that you want to 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 go fishing you just grab it and you go um, your grocery baits same thing. This is stuff that you probably have in your in your pantry or your refrigerator at any particular time, and you can just grab it and go. Very very convenient. Uh, the nice thing about grocery baits is if the fishing is not all that good, you can always eat your bait. I would not recommend that with the uh, the the preserved baits, uh, the the catfish bait. Nah, it's probably not a good idea. In fact, most of the packaging will will say on there not for human consumption in great big letters. <laughs> 